Hey everyone, this is Aria, and I hope you're doing well. I got a comment on my last claw simulation tutorial asking if there was a way to do a perfectly looping claw simulation for something like a cape. There's a couple videos on YouTube that show you one way of looping a claw simulation in Blender, but I wanted to know if there was a way to do that using geometry nodes and a moving character, and it turns out there is. First, let's open up a new scene in Blender, hit A to select everything, and then hit delete. Next thing we need to do is get a character for our scene. If you rather do a flag, you can also just use a cylinder as well, and this will work just the same. If you do want to use a character, all you have to do is make sure that the animation is completely looping on the character as well, or else it won't make much sense. If you don't have a character, you can just head over to mixalmo.com and sign up for a free account. Then I'm just using the default character here, but you can use whatever character works for you. You can also upload your own character here. Otherwise, you can just head over to animations here. I'm going to type in fly. You just want to select this first animation here and it will show up in the window. You'll notice that our character is moving in 3D space, so the first thing that you want to do is just set this to in place. I'm just going to change a couple of the settings here. These do not really matter, it's just up to your preference. Then once you've got your animation, all you need to do is click download. These are the settings that I used and just hit download. Next, let's jump back into Blender and we can import our character. So let's head up to file, import since we saved this as an FBX, we can select that option. Then you just want to find where you saved the file on your hard drive and click import. If I zoom in, you'll notice that our pivot point is at the center here. So if we try to rotate this, it's going to rotate along that pivot point, which is fine if you want, but I'm just going to right click and set the origin to the geometry. Next, I'll click R to rotate, X, and type in minus 90. So, something that I want to point out here, you can see that our entire animation ends up being about 142 frames. It doesn't matter if yours is a bit shorter or longer. While I have this entire animation selected, I'm just going to hover over the timeline and click Ctrl C to copy all of these keyframes. Then, since we know the last keyframe is the same as the first, I'm just going to hit Ctrl V and paste that directly over top of the last frame. Now you'll see if I hit play that our animation keeps going all the way to frame 283. Once you've pasted your animation for the second time, what we want to do is actually go back by one frame. I'm just going to write that frame number down. And the reason we want to remember this is this is going to be our final looping point. Based on how long your animation is, this is going to vary. But you do want to make sure that you've got quite a few more frames past your end point. So I'm just going to set this now to 282. If I go back a bit and hit play, if we play through, you'll see our character doing a seamless loop. So once you've taken note of that frame, whatever it is for you, you're just going to head to the very final frame in the animation again. I'm going to hit Ctrl V one more time. And now you see that our final frame is 424. Again, I'm going to go to that frame and just make a note of that frame somewhere just so we can come back and forth if we need to with our end frame. If I was to hit play, you'll see that again our character is fully looping and now it's looping three times. Our final animation is only going to be 282 frames, but we want to have a bunch of extra frames just so that we can loop things properly. Alright, now that we have that, we can just head back to frame 1. Now we can start adding our cape. So hit shift A, mesh, and select plane. Then we're just going to set this into position. This is going to depend on your character and your animation, but I'm just going to rotate this and set it in place. I want to just get this as close to the shoulders as possible. I'm not going to make this perfect just because it's an example, but get this as close as you want. Then we'll just go to the rear view here and let's grab these. I'm going to hit S to scale and I'm going to hit X two times so that it's using the object coordinates. I'm just going to scale this in until it's roughly at our character's shoulders. And that should work for now. You just want to bring this back a little bit and up. 
This is also a little bit too wide, so I'm just going to scale this again. So S and X two times to scale it on the object coordinates. You'll remember in our last tutorial how we used geometry nodes to subdivide, but in this tutorial, we're just going to do it the old school way by right clicking and clicking subdivide. Then we can come down here and give this a few cuts, maybe something around 25. So we can head over to the object data properties. Let's add a vertex group. You can just leave this however you want, but I'm just going to name it pin just so that we know what it is. Then I'm just going to grab four or five vertex points on this side as well as this side. Head back over to the right here and let's click assign. We want to do that with a full weight of one so that it's fully pinned. Now we can hit tab to go back into object mode. Now that we've got the shape of our cape, we can head over to the physics properties and click cloth to add our cloth simulation. Just do this based on the speed of your computer, but I'm going to set this to eight. Then let's scroll all the way down, open up the shape settings. Let's click here and we're going to add our pin group. So let's select pin. Then we also want to open up collisions. You could probably set this a little bit higher. I'm going to set mine to eight, but again, just do this based on the speed of your computer. We also want to add self collisions. I'm just going to type in zero here and it's going to set the minimum value possible for that. Make sure to save and if I hit play, you'll see that we do have our cloth that's pinning, but we've got a couple issues here. Firstly, it's heading right through our character and you'll notice that it's not actually following our character. So what we'll do is click our character mesh and we can head over and add a collision. You can of course play with these, but I'm just going to leave them to default for now. Hit play, you'll see that our cloth is interacting with our mesh now and it's looking good so far. So now what we want to do is attach our cloth to our character. So let's click our plane. I'm just going to rename this. I'm going to hold shift and click the armature. Head up to the left here, open this and go into pose mode. Now we want to select a bone that we can pin this to and it's going to be one of the ones inside our character. So let's just turn on x-ray. You can also just hit alt Z. I'm just going to deselect all these bones here and pick this specific bone here, which appears to be the top of the spine. The way we parent in Blender is to hold control and hit P. Normally, if you're parenting to an object, you would click this, but we want to parent this directly to the bone. So we're going to select bone. If we jump back into object mode, I can hit play and you'll see that our cloth now is attached to our character as well. Our collisions are working. So now that we've got our basic cloth simulation, you can start adding forces. So I think we got something that works here. So I'm just going to click on each one of these just to show you the final values that I've gotten. That's for the center one here. So this is pushing it in. These two outside ones here are pulling the edges out. I'm just going to set this one to three and that should work just fine. You'll notice that if I click on my cloth, the blue line only goes to about frame 250. So we just need to set this up so that it reaches the entire length of our animation. Let's just head back into the physics properties. We can head down here to the cache settings. We want to set this to our end frame. So I'm going to type in 424. And again, this is just the final frame of our animation. Once you've got everything completely set, you can hit bake. Once everything is finished baking, you can just hit the space bar and you can preview your animation, but I think it's going to work just fine for this tutorial. If I let this play all the way to the end, you'll notice that as soon as it loops around, it kind of pops. Thankfully, there's a really easy way for us to utilize geometry nodes to make this a looping animation. I'm just going to open this up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to cloth sim just so we know that this is the full simulation. I'm also just going to add this toggle in here just because we're going to be disabling our cloth sim eventually. Also, now that we've baked our simulation, we don't really need these anymore. So I'm just going to drop these into a collection here just so that they're out of our way. So now that we've got our full cloth simulation, we can just click on the cloth. 
what we need to do is we need to be able to move this animation back and forth along our timeline. And the quickest way to do that is to just quickly export this and re-import it. So let's head up to File, then head to Export, and I'm going to click this option here called Alembic. You just want to find a place on your hard drive to save it. You can name it whatever you want as long as you remember. Then one thing you want to click before we export is this option here, Only Selected Objects. Otherwise, it's going to take all of our other stuff and export it as well. Then we're going to click Export Alembic and you'll see that it's going through our timeline and saving this out as an Alembic file. Awesome, so now that that's complete, what we can do is hide our cloth simulation completely because we don't really need to use that anymore. Head up to the left here and click File and now we're going to import our Alembic back in. So at this time we'll go to Import and click Alembic. Find where you saved your file, click Import. Now you'll see that if I hit play, we've got our cloth simulation, but there's a couple things wrong. You'll notice that when I'm hitting play, it's not actually following our character, so we just need to quickly fix that. So let's head up to the right, and you'll see that we've got this new armature here, and the reason why we have that in here is because our cloth simulation is parented to the armature. So we're just going to unparent that by hovering in the 3D viewport and hit Alt-P. Then you want to make sure you select this option here to keep the transformation. Then we can right click and delete this armature. We want to make sure that we're on frame 1. Select our cloth simulation and we're just going to do the same thing we did before and shift select the armature. Head up here and go into pose mode. I've already got the spine selected. Then you're going to hit Control p select this option here so that it parents it to the bone. Head back into object mode. If I loop this around, you'll see that it does a little bit of a jump at the end there. So we're going to start looping our animation now. Back to frame 1, I'm going to select this cloth simulation here and I'm just going to rename this to cloth base. We also need to make two more copies of this here, so just make sure you've got that selected. Hit Shift D and you'll see we've got another copy. Just hit Escape to leave it in place. Then one more time, Shift D and Escape again. We've got these ones here, so I'm just going to rename this Cloth 1 and this one to Cloth 2. If I click on Cloth 1, then head down to the Modifiers tab, you'll see that we've got a couple options here, and one of them is Time. This is great because we can utilize this to offset our frames. You'll see as I move that, it moves up and down our animation. One thing that we have to watch out for is if I hover over this here, you'll see that there's the number 3. What this is saying is there's three users of this data, which of course are the cloth base, cloth 2, and cloth 1. So we can click on the base and just get rid of it. We don't need that anymore. We're just going to use this as a shell. I'm just going to hide this for now, and you'll see that we've got cloth 1 and cloth 2, and now it's saying 2. If I move this, they're still moving in sync. If I click this one, it's got the exact same value. Again, if I hover over this, you can see in the brackets it says click to make a single user copy, so I'm going to do that. Finally, we can get into our looping, so let's just head over to our second window here. We're going to open this to switch the editor type to the geometry node editor. And to move the menu, and this is going to be a very simple setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide both the cloth 1 and 2 completely and I'm going to open up the cloth base. There's no modifiers on this anymore and if I hit play it's just a parented mesh. But that's okay because we're not going to be using this mesh at all. We're going to be using our two cloths. Jump over to geometry nodes, hit new to add a new geometry node setup. Then, like I said, we're not going to be using our base, so we can just get rid of this completely and just move it over here. We do want to bring our two cloth objects in, so I'm just going to click and drag this over, and I'm going to click this and drag it over as well. Now, if I take this and hook it up to the geometry, you'll see that we've got our first cloth, and this one here is our second cloth. So, the first issue that we have is our first frame doesn't really look like a cape at all, it just kind of looks like a flat mesh. So we don't want to use that frame as our starting frame. So what we can do is select our cloth here and we can use our frame offset. Set this to minus 100. 
Then you'll see that our cloth is actually starting at frame 100 because we've actually backed our animation all the way up to here. So by the time we get to frame 1, it's already done 100 frames. There's a little issue here as well. Our armature is not lining up. There's a super quick fix for that. We're just going to select our armature and this is why we've got so much extra so that we can move this around. So let's hover over the timeline and hit A. Then I'm just going to hit G to move and type in minus 100. Then you'll see that our armature shifts to the left 100 frames, but it's still leaving us a lot of animation. What we want to do is head to our other loop frame that we wrote down before. In my case, it's 282. And if you remember, that was our second looping point for our frames. Let's select our cloth again to open up our geometry nodes. If I hit play and let this play through, you'll see that it's going to go all the way to the end and we're going to have our second problem where it doesn't loop properly. So you'll see a little jump at the end. What we want to do is actually utilize our second cloth. And by the time we get to our last frame here, we want this cloth to take over instead of this cloth. And again, we set our first cloth at minus 100 frames. If I go to the last frame in the animation, you'll see that it's frame 282. So what we can do is take away 100 frames from that, which of course is 182. And that's the exact frame offset we want to set for our second cloth. So let's go to the frame offset and type in 182. If I was to show you this cloth now, you'll see that any time before frame 182 is not doing anything. As soon as we get to 182, our animation starts. Then by the time we get to 282, this will have moved 100 frames, which will be the exact same as our starting point for our other cloth. Now that we've got that, the last thing that we need to do is mix these together. So first, let's hit Shift A and I'm going to type in Set and click Set Position. Then the next thing we want to do is hit Shift A and we're going to type in Transfer Attribute. This is going to be a vector since each of these points has an x, y, and z value in space. We want to make sure that we transfer all of that. Then we're going to click here and set this to index so again it can reference each one of these points. Now we need to have an attribute plugged into here. So what we can do is we want to reference the position. So we're going to type in position. Hook this up to the attribute. Then finally, we need a way to mix these two together. So I'm going to hit Shift A and type in Mix and select RGB. It doesn't matter which one you hook this into. It can be either or. The only difference will be which way the factor has to go. And of course, we want to mix that with the position. Then if I grab this, we can hook this up to the position node here. Then if I was to move this slider back and forth, you'll see that it's mixing between our two cloth meshes. So currently all the way to the right is going to be our cloth 1 and all the way to the left will be cloth 2. Then the very final thing we need to do is keyframe our mix. I'm going to head back to 182 which is right when our second cloth begins. I'm going to right click and insert a keyframe so that any time before this, it'll be utilizing cloth 1. Then, as soon as we get to frame 182, we want to start mixing in our second cloth. We don't want to do that abruptly, so we're going to head all the way to the end frame 282. Click and drag and set this to 0. Right click and insert a keyframe. As soon as it gets to 182, it starts to morph between both of our objects. Then by the time it gets to the end frame, it is now at frame 100 of our second cloth object. Now we can head back to frame 1 and hit play and you'll see that we've got a perfectly looping cloth simulation. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please make sure to like and subscribe. As well, if you want to support me directly, you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!